Hey y'all, hey, welcome back to my channel y'all. My name is Sasha, if you are new. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back my Laurel Royals, so good to see you. If you are new to the fam, welcome to the family, my new Laurel Royals. So good to finally meet you. Welcome y'all to another Aviation Monday. So just as a little disclaimer on this particular investigation, this is one that a crash happened in international waters in the Atlantic Ocean and there were several different entities involved in this particular investigation and as a result they somehow came up with a undetermined reason for the accident but after I give all the details on it let me know down in the comments what do you think was the real culprit behind the crash or should I say who I already have my opinion from based on my research of who I think did it and why, but let's get into it and then let me know in the comments down below who you think did it and why you think they may have done it. Here we go. Egypt Air Flight 990 was a regularly scheduled flight from Los Angeles to Cairo was a layover in John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City. The flight consisted of 14 crew and 203 passengers. Of the 14 crew were main crew captain, 57-year-old Ahmed El Habashi and 36-year-old first officer, Adele Anwar. Along with the main crew were relief crew members the relief crew included 52-year-old Captain Ralph Narlden, 59-year-old Relief First Officer Gamil Abot, and Chief Pilot of the Boeing 767, Captain Hatem Rushdi. Captain El Habashi was a veteran pilot with 36 years flying with Egypt Air with 14,400 total flight hours with more than 6,300 of those hours on the 767. Relief First Officer Al Batuti had close to 5,200 flight hours in the 767 with a total of around 12,500 hours. Of the 203 passengers, the nationalities are divided among seven nations, the United States, Egypt, Canada, Syria, Germany, Sudan, and Zimbabwe, with the largest number of passengers being from the United States. The aircraft operated under Egypt Air was a Boeing 767-366ER named Thutmosis III after a pharaoh from the 18th dynasty. That's just a little bit of history on this particular flight. Now, let's get into the flight itself and the occurrence of what happened. The flight took off from JFK around 1.20 a.m. and reached its cruising altitude at 33,000 feet around 24 minutes later. A few minutes into cruising, Captain Al Habashi left the flight deck to use the lavatory, leaving First Officer Al Batuti alone. A few seconds later, Al Batuti is said to have been exclaimed, I rely on God and disengage the autopilot. Shortly afterward, both engine throttles were moved to idle, thus the aircraft entered a steep dive, resulting in weightlessness throughout the cabin. Even with this lack of gravity, the captain managed to make his way back to the flight deck. Due to how quickly the aircraft is falling, the limits on the fuselage are being exceeded, thus causing the frame to weaken. On one end, the captain is attempting to stabilize the aircraft and pull it out of its dangerous dive, whereas the first officer switches the engine starts levers from run to cut off, essentially cutting off the fuel supply. This lack of fuel would eventually doom the entire flight. 
Without any fuel source, both engines come to a complete stop and the aircraft then lost all electrical power, including both flight deck recorders and aircraft transponder. The flight deck recorder stopped working around 1.50 a.m., which is around the time frame the aircraft managed to come out of its first dive. However, just a minute later, it entered a second dive. Due to the speed of the free fall and already weakened frame from the first dive, small pieces of debris began to separate from the aircraft. Eventually, at approximately 1.52 a.m., the aircraft impacted the Atlantic Ocean. All 217 people on board lost their lives. Because the airplane did crash in international waters, there were several entities involved in the investigation. Those entities which included the Egyptian Authority, the United States Coast Guard, the National Transportation Safety Board, as well as the FBI. Strange enough, the FBI does get involved in cases here and there, but the main reason behind them getting in this one was because of the first officer being suspected of being the reason behind the aircraft's demise. Now, even though the American side came to that decision, they didn't wish to anger the Egyptian side, so they just said it's going to be inconclusive. Now, there is an episode of this which was televised on, um, I think it's British TV, and it's under the show um, Air Crash Investigation, and or it's called Mayday. Mayday is one of my favorite programs. I will actually find and leave a link down below. So if you wish to watch that episode, I highly advise you do. I would recommend it. But let me know down in the comments. Do you think the first officer was actually responsible for this? If you do, let me know why. If you don't think he's responsible, let me know why. Again, I hope that you actually enjoyed this. This one is one of several different uh, aviation mysteries. I wouldn't really call this one a mystery because based on the evidence and what I've read from the uh, transcripts that I've seen online, I think it's sort of obvious what the reason behind the crash was, but I'm gonna leave it as the inconclusive as it's been decided. I will leave a link down below in the description box to the source where I found this info as well as the source to where I found a translated transcript if you wish to read that. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. Again, leave me a comment down below telling me what you thought, who you think is responsible, if anyone at all. Please go follow me over on Twitter at DragonPink07. And with all that being said, I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. To the